Good morning. Which subject among the three full study do you feel you are the least good at? Cultivating the spirit? Inquiry into human affairs and universal principles? Choice in action? I think I lack the power of inquiry the most. In terms of the power of cultivation, stopping my train of egocentric inner speech when I face sensory conditions and not being moved by them is sometimes doable. The same is true for me when I try to concentrate on a task at hand. In terms of power of choice, when I know the right thing to do, putting it into practice is not too difficult. But the power of inquiry, the power of wisdom. In some situations, it is quite difficult for me to even know what the right path is. For example, when I have to break bad news to a friend, what's the best way? And what about things going on in our workplaces, communities, and the world? People have different opinions depending upon their perspectives. When we watch the news, we often find opposing views on the same matter. Who's right? In our lives, we face a variety of dilemmas and difficult problems. It would be so great if I could clearly see the right path to choose in each situation. But sometimes it feels like I'm in the dark and it's hard to know which path is right. When disturbances arise in my mind, I'm the one who suffers and I may end up hurting the feelings of a few other people besides myself as well. However, when a person lacks wisdom, their bad judgments and choices can affect not only their personal relationships, but everything within their responsibility. Organizations, societies, nations, and the world. I understand cultivating the wisdom is so important, but am I making efforts to cultivate the wisdom of the self-nature? Do I know how to cultivate this wisdom? When I asked myself these questions, the answers were no. So I thought that I should pick this topic for my Dharma talk and delve into it. And here is what I learned in the One Buddha's teachings about cultivating the wisdom of the self-nature. The second item of the essential dharmas of daily practice says, the mind ground is originally free from delusion but delusions arise in response to sensory conditions. Let us give rise to the wisdom of the self-nature by letting go of those delusions. What is delusion? It means lack of brightness of wisdom. It is like we are in the dark. It's not being able to see what is right and what is wrong, or what would be beneficial or harmful in human affairs, and not knowing the principles of great and small being and non-being that is behind them. The mind ground is originally free from delusion, but delusions arise in response to sensory conditions. This means that our mind has the potential to see all principles and all human affairs clearly, as well as the potential to be deluded because of the lack of wisdom's brightness. Wisdom and delusion are similar to this. In a default state, you can see all things clearly. However, when something covers your sight, now I cannot really see my script on the screen. <laughs> Your sight becomes limited. It's like trying to see things through a peephole. But 
as soon as what was covering your sight disappears, you can see all things clearly again. Let us give rise to the wisdom of the self nature by letting go of delusions. When we let go of delusions, we can give rise to the wisdom of the self nature again. What then covers our sight? What covers the wisdom of the self nature? What is the cause of delusion? Have you ever felt your view becoming narrower when you are disturbed? I have. When I feel disturbed, what comes into my sight is only how hurt I was by what the other person said or did. At that moment, I may not see why they did what they did. That is just out of my view. Our sight also can narrow when we are in a hurry or lose the state of equanimity. Yes, disturbances can cause delusions. How about when you are attached to something? Our attachments, no matter what they are to, a person or a task or an idea or an opinion, the attachments limit our sight and cover our wisdom. That's how our mind works. What comes into our sight is only what we are attached to, and our sight becomes narrower and it leads us to make wrong choices. Attachments can cause delusions. Also, when we have conceptions about ourselves, for example, when we have ideas such as, I know this well, or I'm not good at this, our sight becomes covered. The same principle applies when we have conceptions about other things too. When we have fixed ideas about things, that can narrow our sight. There are many different causes that can cover our sight, but what is even more difficult is that it is hard to even know that our sight is covered. Then what should we do? How can we give rise to the wisdom of the self-nature? Let us give rise to the wisdom of the self-nature by letting go of delusions. When disturbances subside, and when we let go of all attachments and fixed conceptions, our mind becomes like empty space. What was covering our sight disappears and all things reveal themselves clearly. That, that is how the wisdom of our self nature can shine by letting go of delusions. However, although we might have let go of all delusions and nothing is covering our sight, this doesn't mean that all the solutions to difficult problems or right paths for dilemmas magically appear in front of us. When we let go of disturbances and delusions, bright thoughts sometimes come to our mind. But in most cases, even with complete and clear sight, we still need to inquire into the principles of great and small being and non-being behind the problems. To put it simply, knowing great means seeing the whole as one and knowing the main principle, which is the greatest purpose that can benefit the whole. Knowing small means seeing the individual parts in detail and knowing their characteristics and present conditions. Knowing being and non-being means knowing how the whole and the individual parts are going to change. 
Why do we need to know creating small being and non-being? Because this world is constructed through the principles of great and small being and non-being. If we think of our body as great, then each body part is a small, and their changes are being and non-being. The universe is the same. Our mind is the same. The self nature, the mind ground, is the great. Different kinds of minds that arise are small, and their changes are being and non-being. All human affairs are also based on the principles of great and small, being and non-being. So. If we really want to know what the right path is in each situation, we need to observe great and small, being and non-being of the situation. Years ago, I was in charge of a project. One day, a client of one of my team members told me that she didn't want to work with my team member. So somehow. I had to break the bad news. My team member was a good friend, and also was very sensitive, so I was worried. I tried to observe great and small, being and non-being. I thought about the project as a whole. I also considered my team member's sensitivity, and identified a third team member who I thought. She relied on the most. I thought, if she heard the news from that team member, she would feel more comfortable than if she heard the bad news from anyone else. What do you think the result was? My team member got hurt and became very disappointed in me because I was in charge of the team. And not hearing the news directly from me made her feel like she was insignificant. I didn't expect that she would respond the way she did to the choice I made. In the situation, I wasn't able to anticipate the change, being and non-being, that my choice would bring about. It is not easy to thoroughly observe great and small, being and non-being. When it feels like we have not yet found a right path, Dharma masters have suggested that we should gather opinions from others. And if we still feel we have not found the best solution, we should put the thought aside and give it some time. The final step. Of this process is making a judgment about what the right path is. This is how Buddhas have brightened their wisdom. Are you facing difficult problems? Try the Dharma of cultivating wisdom's three-step process. Number one, observing great and small, being and non-being. Number two. Honing your thoughts by gathering opinions from others and sometimes putting the thought aside. Number three, finally making a judgment about what the right path is. Difficult problems are chances for us to cultivate our wisdom, and they also are opportunities to lead our lives, our societies. Country and the world to a better path. Don't you want to give this a try? Thank you.